beloved of God, you and I, that's who we are, we have learned while growing up several occasions where the Samaritans are referred to in the scriptures. Though they were Jewish themselves, they were the outcasts of the Jewish family only because of one distinct belief. The devout Jew kind of expected all things to be centered on the temple in Jerusalem, the only place that the God of Israel could truly be worshipped. The Samaritans believed that the worship of the God of Israel cannot be confined to geography, but can be celebrated in Samaria and anyone else at any place else as well. So that was the rift between them. There is the mandate of Christ, who tells the apostles, begin in Jerusalem preaching the good news, and then going out to the lost sheep of Israel, and then to the world itself. And Philip takes this upon himself as they were being taken care of in Jerusalem by Peter, that he went to Samaria to invite them back to the fold. And he met with colossal uh, success because he went to a, a group of the Jewish people who were hungry to be part of the chosen people of God in every way. There are some things that will never change, and I suppose we are going to be in the habit of oh, being opposed to God sometimes, thinking we were serving him, and it's not so. We need to be sure that we are considerate of God and considerate of each other. And the only way we can do that is by following the commandments. It's not enough that we have God on our side. We must be on God's side, too. And Peter reinforces the invitation, telling all, including you and I today, that the following must be ready to give an explanation of anything to anyone for a reason of their hope, but to do it with a sense of gentleness and reverence. The teachers of Israel through the Pharisees uh, made an invitation, but it was under a threat, and it did not go well, especially with the Samaritans. Uh, it's a fine line between the two, I suppose. Perhaps as an example, when I was quite young, my older brother and I were fighting as usual, making a lot of noise in the house. And he was eight and I was about six. And mom was in the kitchen and all of a sudden she came to the living room and she laid the law down. She says, I don't wanna, I'm tired of you two. I've had you up to here. I'm, I'm gonna put you in the dining room. You're gonna sit on a chair and you're not gonna make a noise for 10 minutes. And I'm gonna put the egg timer on at the stove and I don't want you to cheat. Well, for kids, especially in a nice summertime day, five minutes is like a lifetime. Ten minutes is like eternity. So my brother, who was rather ambitious, uh, leaned over to me, and he whispered a plan. And out of fear, I said, yes, I would go along with it. And he bent around the doorway from the dining room to the kitchen where mom was working. He says, Mom! And she says, I told you guys I don't want to hear a thing from you. It's not even two minutes and you're making noise already. And Patty said, can John and I have a spanking instead? <laughs> well, mother came in with that gift of motherhood and she was crying and laughing at the same time. She says, you kids, you may drive me nuts, she says. Uh, she suspended our, our sentence and she sent us out of the house. She says, if you're going to fight, go outside. I just cleaned the house. <laughs> well, she did not intend to have us continue the fight. And she was not that worried about the house condition. She wanted to be a parent that is doing good for her children. She might not have chose the right path, 
but she wanted to be a parent that was concerned. And my brother and I were behaving like aliens, and uh, we should have been better behaved too. The real thing being is that, as God has told us, we only can be good and happy if we keep his commandments. I will not leave you orphans. I will be there with you. But you have to promise to listen to the word of God, to practice it and be it. And if you do that, a lot of things are going to really come into shape for our life and for the life of God.